So tell us what you're closing the season with. Brahms? Yeah. Brahms. The two biggest piano concertos in the world. The two Brahms concertos, the D minor and the B flat. They're enormous pieces. If you love the piano, you must come and hear this because they're virtuoso. Um, they're, they're, they're played by Weyl, who, you know, there are a couple people in the world, like Daniel Berenboim has done this. And he's, Daniel Berenboim is really a genius and a phenomenal pianist besides conductor. He's done this, but just you play the longest piano concerto, like 42 minutes or something like that. That's it. Right. Okay, I'm off stage. Go play some Mozart or something, mm -hmm. you guys on the stage, you know, like whatever. Right. But to do two and Weyl, well, he's just, he, he's a nutcase. He's so good. I don't know how he does this. I know. I just, I just, am, my mouth's open all the time when I'm around him because He's so sweet and so gentle and so gentlemanly and so self-effacing. And then he sits down at the piano and he goes, He's a monster on the keyboard. He is a monster. He scares me. He actually scares me. I go, how do you do this? And you know what? If you ask him to play the Liszt Concerto after or something. Hey, he can do it. Yeah, like as a joke, we'll pay a 20 grand. You know, the orchestra has the parts. And he'll like sit down and play the Liszt Concerto for you or whatever piece you say, Beethoven Third Concerto. He'll play he it. He told me though, that when he plays a big concert like this, he will play it every day, three times a day, so that on the show day, it's a breeze. Yeah. So just to play And through. then he memorizes everything. That's what's astounding to me. No. He's a total, and I mean this in the most lovely way, he's a completely amazing, gorgeous freak of a beautiful musician. I just, you can't compare him to normal people. Like, like you know, me, I sit and study till two o'clock in the morning. I struggle to understand what Beethoven does. He works really, really hard. Hours and but hours a day. Has, he has some extra magic about him that I can't, ever explain to anybody. I, I remember I first heard about him when I was judging a competition. And the other judges said to me, if you want to hear a real fantastic pianist in Chicago, go over to Roosevelt. This guy named Weyl Farouk, he's Egyptian, is playing a whole recital of Rachmaninoff. And I thought, OK. And I went, oh. I know. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like out of this world and when you think also that he happens to have a disability that's what's you know beyond beyond yeah. and when you look at the size of his hands you're like there's no way and the fact like how he does it and how he knows how to figure it, I, I, it, it, it it's it's like a special effect yeah and that's why you say he's just a person who has gone beyond but is just normal and you know they would never let him into any music schools because they wouldn't let him learn the piano because they saw, especially as a boy, how small his hands were. You know, and then when he tried to go into a college division or pre-college, they wouldn't accept him. They said, there's no way. And yet he did it. And boy, did he, and he did it well. do it. <laughs> he did it well. And he's so great to be around. He just, know. He, you know, you used the word captivating earlier, you know. And if you just met him and talked to him, he doesn't even have to play the piano. He's so interesting. Oh, God. And humble, and yeah. he's a fascinating person. I'm yeah. thrilled about that show. I Me can't too. wait for that one. Yeah. Well, Kirk, it sounds like you have uh, just a spectacular season lined up for everyone. Is there anything that we've missed that you want to share? Hmm. My birthday's on April the 8th. Okay. No, no, I'm just Send <laughs> gifts. <laughs> no, no, don't. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, come, come and see this amazing orchestra they are really a fantastic orchestra in a gorgeous hall in a gorgeous acoustic um it's it we're very lucky to have this orchestra i think mm -hmm. these players who are so gifted and they're so prepared and they're so committed and they love each other and it's a, a, a lovely atmosphere in rehearsals and mm -hmm. in the concerts on the stage and they help each other and you can feel that too. But the audience also makes a big 
difference. And we all know that whether you're a theater person, a dance person, or an orchestra player. And when the energy and the heart is coming from the audience, I don't know how I, I can tell you that I can feel it after I do the first couple minutes of a piece. I can feel it, either they're with me, even if they're quiet, or they're, right, maybe, or they're, you know, it's just not their mm -hmm. cup of tea. So the audience is very important to us. I always say they are the most important part of a show. Otherwise, yeah. you're just singing alone in your bedroom, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, if they're not happy, then what's the point, right? Or engaged, totally. or, or, or if you don't have them, you have nothing, right? Yeah, the performance, it's a 50-50 it's, it's contract, right? We both have to participate. And so I think that without them, you know, it's just not fun either, yeah, right? It's true. People ask me very often when I'm doing a master class or a talk, how do you program these things, Kirk? And I think the first thing that I always say is I say, what do people in the audience want to hear? Mm -hmm. And if I find that they want Frank Sinatra all year long and that's <laughs> all they want, then we should maybe do more Frank Sinatra. And if they want Brahms all right. the time or piano concerti, we should certainly pay attention to this, mm -hmm. you know, and listen to them. And each audience in each community in each hall is different. But if that's the most important thing. And then you have to think about the health of the orchestra, what the orchestra wants, what the budget is, how much rehearsal time you have, la, 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 all that kind of stuff. But I think what you're really good about is giving people, um, you've converted me to, an or to somebody who loves a symphony now. I, I was right. never a symphony person, now I love it. Oh. And I think what your gift is, is that you, you, you trick us into learning first <laughs> and you always have really good stories, right? That oh. now you're, and now that I feel like when I know something about the piece or the composer, I feel like I have a little more inside, right? And I love, I love learning and I love that inside, like, oh, this was Napoleon's funeral march? Yeah. Now I'm gonna listen to it differently, right? And uh -huh. this is the party that the town is having when he died? Yeah. I'm listening <laughs> the differently. The Right? Now, yeah. it, now it, it, there's a, a different narrative in my head, right. right? So I think you're outstanding at first teaching us through stories and through history. And then I think you give us a variety. And so I, I've, you know, I get to hear, um, you know, a John Williams that is very easy for me to, to appreciate and understand. Mm -hmm. But now I'm also going to learn about Tchaikovsky. Yeah. Right? And then it, you're good at introducing people and bringing us on a path to go deeper into classical music in a very accessible way um, that nobody feels uncomfortable there. I think that's what I love about when I go to the shows is nobody feels like, I, sometimes if you go to a, a symphony downtown, you feel a little like on the outside, mm -hmm. right? Nobody's talking, you know, it's just so serious and quiet. And, and I think that you, you really welcome the audience to join you on this journey and learn about it and appreciate it deeper. And so thank you well, for thank all you. you do. I'm trying to pull them in, be with them, get inside them. I think get inside the audience, get inside them. It's like I can talk to you or I can talk to you. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like that with our music. Can we get inside our audience tonight? Can we grab them? I use the word mm -hmm. grab them. You know, or we're going to get new people who are coming to Frank Sinatra that'll never have been to another show before, right? Because they just love Frank Sinatra. Yeah. But now, oh, I like that guy. You oh. know, I like this orchestra. That was great music. Then they start to come see something else. Or when we do a lakeside show, somebody just came to a free concert, but now they're like, well, that was fun. Yeah. Or they come to the hall and they say, wow. Wow, what right. a nice hall. Or yeah. wow, free parking. How about wow. it? Or like just nine blocks away. Yeah. Or whatever it is. All of it. Know? Yeah. Well, thank you, oh, and good luck this season. I hope it's a wonderful year. Thanks so much, Diana. All right, thank you.